Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Starting in this video, we are diving into the pit of unused content found in Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. And there is a lot to go over in this game. Some might say Into the Pit may even rival a certain other game in the series in terms of the sheer amount of content that didn't get used. In this first video, we'll be focusing on a whole bunch of graphics that don't go used as there is a ton of these left over. Like, seriously, a lot. Enough to fill up more than an entire video. Also, I have a Steam key for a copy of Into the Pit to give away, so drop a comment saying who your favorite animatronic is, and I'll randomly pick a winner 24 hours after this video goes live. And with all of that said, smack that like button below for a free hug from a certain yellow rabbit. It's time to hop into the pit and find some lost bits. Alright, so to kick things off, I think it's very important to go over how FNAF Into the Pit was basically completely overhauled over the course of its development, at least visually. And this is for the simple fact that in the second interview with Daco, according to series creator Scott Cawthon, the game was not only originally going to be made in a 16-bit Super Nintendo style, but that the game was actually also originally once planned to be available on actual physical Super Nintendo carts that would fully function on real hardware too. It was just supposed to be a little novelty one-off, like, oh yeah, here's this little company that makes... 16-bit cartridges and that was that was immediately appealing to me because i'm all about the super nintendo and so if i so if i was so if i could make something that would come on a on the super nintendo cartridge you know sign me up huh sounds like a good idea and making their games available on physical carts is part of the developer's shtick that made into the pit mega cat studios However, the decision was eventually made to move away from the physical cart aspect of this game so more players could play the game on PC and consoles. And don't get me wrong, I definitely get wanting to make the game more accessible, but honestly, I think still having the option of getting this game on Super Nintendo carts would have made for an awesome special edition of the game or something. Anyways, all that to say that although the game's direction was moved from essentially being a Super Nintendo game, there are still numerous leftovers that seem to be remnants of this original design left over in the release build of the game, including sprites of backgrounds, objects, and characters too. So yeah, first we got some unused SNES-style sprites for the living room in Oswald's home. There's the background itself, as well as early versions of several set pieces, including the living room sofa, table and chairs, this lamp, as well as a smaller and bigger cabinet. And then similarly, there's an early Super Nintendo version of Oswald's parents' bedroom, as well as this set of objects like the bed, some shelving, and more meant for it. And also similarly, there are some early SNES graphics for Jeff's Pizza, as well as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in the past. For Jeff's Pizza in the game's present, there are early graphics for two rooms, Jeff's security room, as well as this hallway that seems to have been scrapped from the game, as there doesn't appear to be an equivalent area in the final cut. But going back to the early security office, what makes this extra interesting is that it appears to have the exact same layout as the office in FNAF 3, right down to the desk with the fan on the left, the garbage can, single door on the left, vent in the upper section on the left, the window is in a similar spot, and of course, probably the biggest similarity is having a box full of FNAF character masks, though here, instead of the toy versions of the characters seen in FNAF 3, we got what looks like some clown masks or something. Hmm, maybe a reference to Carnival? Although the final design of the security room in the past is kind of similar, the similarities are definitely more noticeable with the present version of The Office. In fact, there's a leftover ability to overlay the old version of The Office, as the developers used it as a reference when making this new one. By doing so, we can see how things like the box of masks, trash bin, and desk are all basically in the same place. But Jeff's monitors have now replaced the old window. Interestingly, there's also some sort of mode for the old version of The Office where the window would like start to glow or something. It's pretty neat. 
Then also, for all three of these early rooms that I went over, you probably noticed the blank lower third of the sprite. And it's likely that this section of the screen was planned to be reserved for dialogue, or perhaps a heads-up display similar to something like what's seen in the original Legend of Zelda. Then next, also for Jeff's Pizza, is an early version of the present ball pit that's central to this game and its title. And as a nice way to transition to the past version of this building, there are sprites left over for an animation of some kids playing in this same ball pit too. Basically the same as is seen when Oswald first emerges from the pit in the past at the start of the game. Then, also for the ball pit room, left over unused in the files is an early version of the Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica mural seen there. Yeah, here the animatronics look infinitely more creepy. Like, that's giving me nightmares for sure. And, interestingly enough, this mural can be re-implemented into the game too. And in addition to Bonnie being super creepy and purple here, yeah, purple, not blue, he can also be seen holding a different style of guitar, his original Flying V that he used to be depicted playing in earlier games, instead of the other style guitar that he's been using for the last couple of years now. Now, I'm assuming this change was made since the Flying V guitar is made by the Gibson Guitar Brand. So, much like the other games made over the last few years in the series, in order to avoid any sort of copyright complications, they had to go with the new made-up design. Anyways, next, also for the animatronics, there are several sprites meant for the backstage room, including an early version of Fred Boy himself. There's these shelves with a bunch of animatronic heads of Bonnie, Freddy, and Chica, but interestingly, there are also two of the Yellow Rabbit as well. There's this sprite of an Endo 2 with Chica's feet beside it, as well as another pair of Endos with one rocking Chica's head, similar to the one seen in the final version of the backstage. Then, another interesting set of early sprites for the pizzeria are for an animation of the Golden Freddy hiding spot, presumably for when the player would enter and exit it. And what I find more interesting about this is that it looks like Golden Freddy was going to be seen standing, as opposed to his iconic sitting position that it was changed to in the final cut. And then lastly, for the background objects in the pizzeria, there are sprites for various arcade machines as well as the Ticket Eater. These early machines look a lot more generic compared to the ones seen in the final version where they're basically all unique, so this is a change I think was made for the better. Next up, there are early version graphics also thought to be for the Super Nintendo version of other miscellaneous objects, including this Chica toy where there are animations of its eyes shining or something. There's a chunk of cheese, perhaps meant to have been used as part of the rat trap section of the game. And then there's also this blood pressure device, and this is probably related to a scrapped heart rate mechanic in the game. Now I'll revisit this more when I get around to going over the dev build of the game that was leaked for the Nintendo Switch, but basically there was a mechanic for when Oswald would hide in the vent where the player would have to move a heart icon up and down to match the heartbeat line that would move across the screen in order to not get detected. Anyways, next, there are early sprites for animations of several of the game's characters. For the animatronics, there's actually only early Super Nintendo sprites for Chica, and these are of her searching under a tablecloth, as well as for her running, two things that I don't believe she's ever seen doing in the final release of the game. Then for the kids, we have an early version of Chip, or Child 5 as he's referred to in the files, getting scared. And then there are various early sprites of Mike, including an idle animation, him playing skee-ball, looking for something, walking, talking, as well as eating something. Now what's also noteworthy here is that two of these early sprite sets feature Mike with a design on his shirt, while the rest don't. And the ones that don't also have his face shaded differently. I've seen some suggest that this might be a beard, but I think that's unlikely given the likely age of Mike, so it's more likely that this is just shadowing on his face instead. Then next, we of course have a whole bunch of early sprites of the game's protagonist, Oswald, also thought to be remnants from the Super Nintendo version. And these include sprites for numerous animations, including Oswald escaping from something, presumably the Yellow Rabbit, with and without a flashlight, Oz getting in and out of a kitchen counter, him interacting, getting into a locker, hiding under a table from various directions in both a regular and faster version, 
A pair of animations for him hiding under a bed, him being shocked, getting in and out of a chest, opening the freezer door, apparently opening up a glass door, reaching for something, meant for a cutscene during Night 4, Oswald looking up and getting scared, then sweating and looking back down, a sideways animation of him talking, meant for Night 1, and then there are also animations for two actions Oswald can't do in the final cut of the game, blowing a flame in order to melt some ice, as well as jump. Now, the ice melting was something that the player was once supposed to do during Night 2, likely to get another item in the game, probably in the freezer, as that opening animation I mentioned earlier was also meant for Night 2. And then it's unclear if jumping would have been just something that Oswald would do during a certain cutscene, or if it was actually going to be a part of his moveset, but either way, it never ended up getting used. Then lastly, there's also an animation of Oswald getting grabbed and shaken by the Yellow Rabbit. But interestingly here, this is like a blend of styles, as Spring Bonnie here isn't using 16-bit SNES coloring, and for the final frame of this animation, Oswald uses his final design, which is kinda weird to see. And of course, we can't forget about our man Jeff here, and he also has some early animations left over. There are sprites for him talking, walking, and exhaling, looking just as miserable in each of these as ever. I think it's really cool to see all of these early style sprites. Pretty crazy that it looks like the entire game was pretty far along before the decision was made to remake a bunch of the assets. And honestly, I think it's even more crazy that these were still left over in the launch build of the game. And now, for the second half of this video, there are also a whole ton of unused graphics left over in the game from the final style that it took. For starters, there are some early versions of the buildings seen on the game's map screen. We got an old version of the library building, where it looks a lot more run down, and honestly, with the large books text, it looks a lot more like a bookstore than a library. Then we also got this early design of the mill, where it looks completely different and has a little water wheel going on in the front here. Next, there's an early version of Oswald's home with a different design, mainly lacking the front porch seen in the final one. And then lastly, there's a graphic for a scrapped town square area featuring a nice little fountain. I guess this was once intended to be an area for the player to visit, but no such area is ever seen in the final cut. And speaking of areas that the player was once planned to visit, apparently there were plans for the player to actually go inside the library instead of just interacting with characters outside of it, as left over in the game is a completely scrapped librarian character that would have presumably been found inside the library. Yeah, a librarian in a library. Checks out. And for this librarian, in addition to idling, we also have animations of her bending over and speaking, walking, as well as adjusting her glasses and dusting off her skirt. So yeah, definitely looks like there were more plans for the library than what we ended up getting. And this makes sense, I think in my first playthrough I only went there like once, so it definitely felt underutilized. And since we're talking about the early buildings, there are actually early gameplay background graphics for them as well. There's an early background version of Oswald's home, which looks quite a bit different, notably having a chimney here, as well as white picket fence out front, which aren't present in the final version of the home. Then we also have day and night sprites for the mill area, obviously rocking the early design that we just went over earlier. This also isn't just the back of the mill, as is seen in the final build, and it certainly seems like the original idea was for the player to actually enter inside of it too. And then lastly, we also have an early graphic for the library, where although it looks similar to its final design, yup, like I speculated earlier, it looks like it was originally, in fact, planned to be a bookstore instead of a library. Be it a library or bookstore, it certainly does seem like it was once planned to play a bigger part in the game. Then next up, there are actually leftover graphics for various rooms and objects in the game that appear to be from a style somewhere between the original Super Nintendo version and what we ended up getting in the final cut. For starters, with the school, there are background graphics for the main hallway, where some things, like the blue stripe on the walls and power box here, look similar. Overall, we can see that it looks quite different. 
And also for the school, left over are some early lockers where they can be seen a bit taller compared to what they look like in the final game. Then onto Oswald's home, we first have an early version of Oswald's room, which notably has its layout flipped compared to the final version. Then we got early background graphics for Oswald's basement, one with the window open, and then one with it closed, and with an added table complete with a nice bloody knife here. Seeing that randomly pop up in the basement honestly would have been pretty cool to see in the game. And then there are also several early objects for the dining room area, including an early version of the calendar, some shelves, a chair, cabinet, as well as a hatch leading up to the attic, which seems to reveal that originally the player would be able to get to the attic from the dining room instead of the one hallway as it was ultimately changed to. Then onto the pizzerias, we got early versions of the ball pit room for both the present, where it looks really basic, as well as the past. Both of these look quite a bit smaller than how the room is seen in the final version, and we can also notably still see the early animatronic mural on the wall here. And interestingly, we can also see the sun and rainbow art on the wall, and this is something that did go on to remain in the final version. So with how this rainbow was near the edge of the room there, we can see just how much this room was expanded. And much like the even earlier ball pit graphic I went over earlier, there's also a slightly updated one, but still different than the final design. And interestingly, you can still enable this graphic in-game to see just how different it is compared to the final design. Also here, and for all of these early rooms, we can see that the entrance is seen as a door on the left side, instead of being towards the player as it's seen in the final. Then also for the ball pit, there are various graphics that were once planned to appear in the foreground, and these appear to be just bigger versions of stuff like the rocking horse and slide that are seen there normally. And there are these early foreground graphics for both the present as well as past version 2. Then just outside of the ball pit room, if we remove the door that leads to it, we can find a normally unseen little sign there that just reads, Play Area. I assume this was meant to be a sign that would be placed over top of the door to indicate what was inside. Next, we have similar background graphics for the pizzeria basement, again in both a past and present variety. And for the basement, there are also various other unused object sprites, including stuff like a furnace, a shelf, some chairs, a chest, table, a poster of uh, a pea, a golf club, a quill, yeah, I don't know as well as a pair of seemingly busted arcade machines. And interestingly enough, it looks like this early version of the basement room is actually still left over in the Switch dev build that was leaked, so we'll chat more about it in a future video when I dive more into that dev build. So we talked a bunch about the old security room earlier, but left over in the game for the past version of the room, we also have this sprite of Chica's head, and this is apparently supposed to be the Chica's head that's seen in FNAF 3. And then for the present version, we also have an early version of Jeff's monitors, where their contents can be seen flipped compared to the final version. Then also for the security office, there are sprites for an otherwise unseen night guard suit that seems to have been meant to be used there. And it has this animation of it moving as if it were on a door that got slammed or something. Then for the dining area for Jeff's, we have some early looking graphics of chairs and tables, a menu poster, and then this other graphic that appears to have been an early version of the main stage curtains as well. And similarly for this customer, seen in Night 2, there's also some early sprites of her chatting on the phone. Then lastly for Jeff's Pizza, there's also this unused secret door that was meant for the arcade room. And this door can actually be re-enabled in the game, and by doing so, we can see it was meant to be hidden behind this arcade machine on the right side of the room. And furthermore, its functionality can be re-enabled too, so you can open it to reveal that this was actually the original way that Oswald was going to enter Afton's room where his dad is trapped, instead of having to go through events to get there, and the main door being revealed to be found behind the prize machine in the arcade towards the end of the game. In my first playthrough, I always thought that this peeling wall here was suspicious, and yeah, this is also referred to as Killer Door Tarp. And speaking of the arcade, there are also early versions of basically all of the machines seen there. 
The changes are often quite minimal, with just better shading or slightly different colors. Like, yeah, as seen with the Helpulees machine here, the changes aren't huge. But on the other hand, the prize machine also had a few extra changes in the old version, such as missing the Foxy Mask, which is good they added it back in, as there's a severe lack of Foxy in the game, as it is. The exotic Butters Bowl is smaller in the old version, and there's also these yellow balls in the bottom right. And it seems like you can still see their silhouette in the final version of the machine, and seeing these here now, this looks kinda strange. Then, in addition to the early arcade machines, there are also two joystick-operated ones that seem to have gotten scrapped. A pretty generic teal one, and then there's also this pink pizza slice one. And now, lastly for this first video, there are several unused animations for a bunch of the game's characters. For starters, there are various unused animations of the kids that you save throughout the game. For each of them, except for the first one, there are animations of them being grabbed and shaken, presumably by the yellow rabbit. And then also animations of them being freed from whatever was holding them, with an extra one for the first child, where he looks more frightened. Then also for each of the kids, there are animations of them jumping into the ball pit, perhaps suggesting that after you rescued them, you would have had to bring them to the ball pit or something. Then, in addition to those, there are unused animations of Oswald untying Chip from the arcade machine, as well as the hammer on the machine bonking him on the head. There are nervous walking animations for the first kid you save, an unused idol animation, him crying, as well as handing Oswald some keys. What's also interesting about all of these unused sprites for this character is that he can be seen wearing a blue hat, while in the final game, he's always hatless. And it's unclear what these keys would have been for, but honestly, I think this would have fleshed out this character at least a bit more than just seeing him peace out immediately after you rescue him. And the file name for this animation also refers to this child as Trevor, so yeah, I guess Trevor was intended to have been his name. And then there's actually cut content for the cut content here, as there's also some unused dialogue for Trevor here for when he'd give Oswald the keys. He was meant to have said, I don't have the guts to stick around, but please look for Mark and help him. I hope you find your dad. I don't recall there being any Marks in the game here, so perhaps since the names are similar, Mike used to be named Mark instead. Then for the second trapped child, there's also an unused animation of him crawling out of a cabinet door. And earlier, you also might have noticed that the character that I mentioned for the second trap child are completely different than the one that's seen in the game. And yeah, that's because I guess before the decision was made to change it to Mike, it was this guy who's apparently known as Cody. Yeah, you remember that one guy from the beginning of the game that's seen playing that one arcade game that's basically never seen again? Yeah, well, in addition to the animations I mentioned earlier, there's also an unused idol animation, him walking nervously, and then to add to that animation of him emerging from the cabinet I mentioned earlier, it's basically exactly how Mike is seen doing after you rescue him. So, based on all of this, and, well, the file names for this character referring to him as Child 2, it does look like Cody here was originally going to be the second kid that you'd rescue. Then after these, we also have some unused animations for Oswald as well as his dad. For starters, there are unused sprites for a cutscene animation of Oswald digging through the ball pit frantically, as well as Oswald's dad shaking his head. Now, although I don't think it's 100% clear where these were to be used, my best guess is that it would have been for a cutscene near the start of the game after the Yellow Rabbit first grabs Oswald's dad and pulls him into the pit, as there, Oswald would be digging through the pits to find his dad, and then this head shaking may have been meant for after he's pulled out onto the floor. Then, much like the other kids we went over earlier, in addition to all of the early Oswald animations, there are also several that go unused in his final style, well, for the most part. These include Oswald being grabbed and shaken like the other kids with and without a flashlight. And although Oswald does get grabbed by the Yellow Rabbit in the game, those sprites look different. And then we got him dialing and making a phone call, and then an animation of him apparently pulling the school fire alarm for what appears to be an also scrapped section of the game, as we also have unused sprites for the fire alarm being pulled. 
Now this animation of Oswald appears to be identical to the one for him pulling the breaker switch whenever the power goes out in the pizzeria, but the sprites for pulling the fire alarm switch are distinct in the files. Now I said for the most part earlier, as there's actually one more unused animation of Oswald getting grabbed. And although he looks similar to his final design here, he actually has the bigger, more round nose that was seen in his early design. So this appears to be another case of an in-between style being used. Then next, we also have what looks to be an unused animation of Oswald using the sticky hand. And although similar, the animation that is seen in the game has the hand stretching out much further. And then there's also this animation of Oswald opening a locker, and you may remember these as the old style lockers that we went over earlier. Then lastly for Oswald, there's actually an early version of the interaction prompt left over in the game. Instead of either being a magnifying glass hiding icon or bell as is seen in the final, the old graphic would quite literally just say interact. And as you can see, this early graphic can actually still be re-implemented in the game too, so we can see it in action as well. Next, we got a rather creepy unused animation of Oswald's dad turning his head a full 180 degrees, before it quickly flashes to turn into the yellow rabbit's head. I honestly wonder at what point in the game this was originally intended to have been used. And then lastly, at least for this part 1, there are some creepy looking sprites referred to only as animatronic head. And apparently, this is a sprite that looks to be based on or reworked from one of Pop Goes the Weasel from the far off time of 2015. In any case, it's currently unclear where this head was going to be used. Now these definitely aren't all of the unused graphics left over in this game, as there are several others including graphics for some unused achievements, minigames, items, more unused characters with more dialogue, and more, but I'll save those for follow up videos. And there is a lot more to go over, so I'm thinking this game will probably take at least like 3 videos to cover. So stay tuned for all of that in the near future, and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as they're up. Till then though, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.